know if God calls you. Do you want to be part of God's calling? Or is it just kind of, are you comfortable in the way life leads? What does it take if Jesus says, I want you to do this? Would you be comfortable to say yes? Or would you weigh all the benefits and all the parts that you would not be so sure about that? That is the question we're going to answer to you today. And with me is Dave Dick, and he is the director of Heartstone Bible Camp that once before you even stood before this calling to say, what do I do with this? I have a wife, I have four children. Do I wanna take the leap of faith to make a difference and to share the love of Jesus in this world? And if that's you, or if you wanna find out more about that, how you could know how God calls you, why God calls you, and what the reason is for His calling. This will be a great show for you. Dave, welcome to the show. Thank you. Now, you felt called by God. How did you know? Yeah. Um, well, in regards to calling, we know that our Lord um, tells us in His Word that there is a calling that God has when people come to faith in Him. And there's the calling that we have from God in regards to which type of service or ministry uh, you would uh, serve Him in, in your life occupation. And just as our roles as husbands and fathers, um, employees, um, sons and daughters, things like that, we have roles that we uh, serve Christ in. Um, those, those are our ministry. Um, so everyone has that call to to honor God in your family and honor God in your marriage and in your workplace. So those are clear callings. So you're talking about basically love God with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. Mm -hmm. So that, that, that calling that he has for us to come to him and the calling that we generally have in as Christians and following him. And then as the question you're asking, how do we know when God is directing your path when yeah. he's saying, okay, this is where I want you to go and how do we figure that out? One of the joys that I have found and ministries asking the question of why do we do what we do? Um, and the joy of finding our purpose and, and our service, just as you have your program here, the Barb Marshall Show, and I'm as the director of Heartstone Bible Camp, as I step back and ask the question, what is my purpose and what I'm wanting to accomplish while I'm here? And wanting to answer that is really coming back to the scriptures and saying, okay, what is God's purpose? And, and wanting to know who Jesus Christ is and coming to Him, how can we serve Him? Yeah. One of the things that Jesus tells us in His Word, He says that He loves His church, that He um, will build His church, He'll protect His church, He gives gifts to His church, leadership to His church. Um, it says that He loves, in Ephesians chapter 5, that He loves and He nourishes and cherishes His church. And the way that I found uh, that I believe God called me to the ministry that I'm in, in now was really with that first motive of saying, okay, God, just as a Christian and understanding my calling in all these areas of life, I want to know what my purpose is. And it's, like you said, the greatest commandment. Love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Yes. And love your neighbor as yourself. And you know what? That is tough yeah. to do sometimes. It is. Yeah. Sometimes you want to smack them over the yeah. head, but yeah. you can't, you yeah. know, you just can't. Mm -hmm. So you figure that out. Yeah. You figure out your purpose. And then God called you yeah. to ministry. And what were you saying? Are you nuts? Well, yeah, I How was, did that I was go? surprised. I was really surprised because my passion, what actually brought me to Potter Valley, where I minister at, at the Bible camp, was the church originally. And I was reading the word and I was seeing Christ's love for the church. And the question came to me, is if, the, is, if this is how Christ loves his church, how should I love it? And ministries like Heartstone and the Barb Marshall Show, we call them parachurch ministries. And really if we elevate and under, understand that this is Jesus' church, he loves his church, we come underneath it to help support it and to yeah. build it up. And so it was a church that brought me to where I currently live. And part of being in Potter Valley, I found out about this Christian Bible camp and their mission statement is to share Christ's love yeah. by serving churches. And that was right up your alley. Yeah, and I'm like, wow, God, that's, that's my passion. If I'm a Christian and I love Jesus, I want to love what He loves. And so everything I do should be in support, whether it's a parachurch ministry, whether it's just um, uh, being an employee in a workplace or your roles in the family and the home. 
should all come underneath saying, I want to love what Jesus loves and honor him in my life. And so the calling was kind of a surprise to me because originally I was just saying, I want to find the right church. And through that, I got, was introduced to the ministry of Heartstone Bible Camp. And now, uh, during Heartstone Bible Camp, you're excited about that. You yeah. believe what they do. You yeah. totally back it up. Mm -hmm. You just pay off all your debt. Oh, yeah, I was telling you about that. How yeah. did all that start? Because yeah. you're finally debt free, a dream of all of us. Yeah. And then things go different than you planned. What happened? Yeah. Um, before we came here, I worked in the advertising and marketing world. And when I graduated uh, college in 2005, I had a lot of student loan debt, and I always sensed God's call in my life to, to serve Him. But having a, a massive amount of debt makes it hard, because you gotta pay this off, and it doesn't really free you up to serve Christ fully. And uh, so we just trusted the Lord to provide for our finances. And so I just worked hard as I could in the work world, and God blessed that. In the last four years, I was able to pay off all of my student loans and the board of directors for the camp that I work at had asked me if I would consider moving up to the camp a year prior to the directorship transition from the previous director. Financially, I'm saying, how no! can I do that? You know, yeah. I, I just yeah. got debt free, yeah. but the camp financially wasn't in a place where they could afford to pay that. So they had asked me, the board of directors said, would you consider prayerfully asking your, fr your family, your friends, your church, if they would want to partner with you in the ministry. So my wife and I, we prayed about that. We sought counsel from our pastors and elders, and we, um, we took a step, step of faith, and we said, Lord, we believe you've called us here to serve in this ministry. They had offered the, the director position to me, and but I knew it was going to be a crucial time of learning this transitional process of passing the baton, because in a Bible camp, there's many hats you have to wear, from knowing how to run a kitchen to HR to maintenance and grounds to working with churches and church visitations. It um, sounds like getting overworked, it's basically. A, it can be a lot, yeah. 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 So it's a lot to learn. And um, so we took the step of faith and I told my employer, I gave him a two month uh, notice that I'd be transitioning from my job there and going back into full-time ministry. And we were excited because we just paid our debt off. The next month, I had the worst month in the history of this company. I couldn't even, I didn't make enough money to even pay my rent. Was this the, the moment you say, God, what are you doing? Yeah, this is like, not right. Yeah. Because you would expect it to just be abundant, exactly. blessing, and yeah. completely, but that was not the case. And yeah, you kind of second guess yourself. It's like, God, was this what I'm supposed to do? Because now I just had the worst month in the history of this company, and I'm really supposed to go back into full-time ministry here, are you sure? And, um, and I trusted, because I know that God, even, even in hard times, He ordains and allows hard times to come into our life to refine us, to cause us to, to pray and to come and yearn for Him, to trust Him through trials, and He grows us through those things. Now, do you think that is actually an attack from Satan or God allowing for you to grow to become well, more dependent on Him? Um, well, God is, He's sovereign over Satan. He tells us that. We see the example in Job, yeah. um, the book of Job in the Bible, where Satan actually had to ask permission to bring all these trials upon Job, and God allowed that to test Job. And so it's kind of like that saying, no pain, no gain. You know, sometimes- I hate that one. I know. <laughs> I just yeah. hate that one. So. And, and God uses trials. James tells us in chapter one that he causes all things. It says, rejoice in your trials. And I mean, that's kind of a crazy thought, rejoicing in trials. Yeah, that but is even, crazy. Even in hard times, God yeah. will work those things out. Like Romans eight says, yeah. he causes all things to work to together work for together the good. For, good. for yeah. those who are in Christ and called according to his purpose. And so, so here I am, made, made this big decision to leap out in faith, to, yeah. to go. And the next month I had no money. Oh. And so I said, all right, Lord, I'm trusting you. And it caused me to pray more and to be more dependent on him. Wow. Because as Americans, we are so self-sufficient. We, we are. Got, and we need. And I want to yeah. get to that for a moment. I want to say, you know, we are self-sufficient and mm. we depend on ourselves because we have given up on God. We think we know it better so often. And I want you to stay tuned because what happens with Dave will just blow, as the Dutch expression says, your socks off your feet. Stay <laughs> tuned. I would encourage you to get involved with Love Your Life Ministries by attending a uh, conference, a meeting that we have once a month, every month. The next one will be in January. And to see how different women um, have gone through different journeys and, and struggles in their life. And be encouraged that you can change and, and be loved. 
with me is Dave Dick, the director of Heartstone Bible Camp, and um, he chose to go into full-time ministry. And that you 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 know God has called you, and and you're going into full-time ministry. You have the worst month of your life. Mm -hmm. You can't pay the bills, and then what? Yeah. So uh, my wife and I, we prayed. We were trusting Christ through this this hardship, and the next month, I had the best month in the history of this company wow. and was able to pay off all of my bills for November, all of my bills for December. January, we moved up to the Bible camp, Heartstone Bible camp. We had $300 to our name. That was it. Nothing in our savings. You with four children, four children. <laughs> moved to the Bible camp. Yeah. With Is that not kind of taking a leap of faith? Very much. Yeah. Yeah. And the Lord provided. Wow. Friends, family, um, anonymous givers, churches saw what God was doing and they said, we're going to give to that. And they, ha they supported us this whole, this whole last year. And now the transition has happened and now we're able to be financially taken care of and provide and serving in this ministry. So wow. just to, to encourage those out there, God is faithful. Sometimes when it doesn't make sense, you know, and we're saying, okay, God, we believe you've, you've called us to do this. Uh, we can trust him. He has our best interest in mind. Just like when Jesus was talking, he says, he says, if you being evil, all right, know how to give good gifts to your children, does yeah. not your heavenly Father know how to give good gifts to those who ask? So we can trust God that he has our best in mind and wants to bless us when we come to him and trust him. And so that was the experience that I have been right in the middle of this last year and it's been such a joy wow. to see God's faithfulness. And I can see it in your eyes. Yeah. It's just the joy of the Lord. It yeah. just shows. Now tell me a little bit about Heartstone. What is Heartstone all about? So, I, I know it's to serve Christian churches, yep. but there's more to it, of course. Yep. So uh, Heartstone is almost 50 years old and they're located uh, in Potter Valley, California. And we serve churches all through the Bay Area uh, and some in the Sacramento area. Uh, we have right now currently about 20 churches that rent the Bible camp. Um, our kind of niche is that we are a smaller dynamic camp where we max out about 100 guests and we provide all the accommodations. So we cook all the food for the guest groups, make sure all their cabins and restrooms are clean, and we it allows those groups to come and do their own ministry. Because a lot of times as a church, if you're going to look for a place to have a church family camp or to have a men's conference or a women's conference or a kids camp, uh, when you have to cook all your own meals and bring all your own food uh, and take care of all your cleaning for the restrooms. It's a pain. Yeah, it's, it really can take you away from the ministry that you're wanting to see happen in the lives of the people that are there at this, the retreat center, the camp that we're at. So we provide those accommodations so it frees them up so they can focus just on the people. And it's a, a great blessing that a lot of churches love to take advantage of. Now, a thought that comes to mind, great, wonderful, mm -hmm. I hate camping, but love the results of it, yeah. you know, and yeah. everybody's different, of yeah. course. <laughs> but, but the results are amazing because you connect with those campfires, with those marshmallows, uh -huh. all that. But if you look at the history today that mm. actually during the Great Depression of the United States, mm. we served more missionaries and gave yeah. more funding and were willing to make sacrifices, yeah. even to go without heat to help others. Mm -hmm. And the times have changed. It's not yeah. like that anymore. And it's actually America that is one of the countries that actually could really use missionaries <laughs> yeah. and evangelists mm. now today. So. When you're going into that new realm, when you're stepping out in faith mm -hmm. and knowing that everything about Christianity for some reason is declining, how do you deal with that? What do you think the answer is? Um, well, when you look at what the, what's going on right now in our country yeah. and you see like the decline in the church, uh, I really believe it comes down to the pulpits in America uh, and the preaching of the Word of God. So much of the church, like we talked about in the beginning of our session today, um, has become so much entertainment driven. And yeah. when we're looking at the world and we're saying, what can we do for the world to try to get people in the church? When Jesus already has laid out how to do church. And um, when you have people that are seeking something for themselves, um, and what can I get from this church? What can this church do for me? You've adopted a worldly mentality and brought that into the church. The Bible says that the earth is the Lord's and all that's in it. It says that we have been made by Him and for Him. So when we really understand that we've been bought with a price and we have the joy now to serve our King who gave us life and that He owns us, the mentality shouldn't be, what can I get from this church? What can this church do for me? But God, what can I give to you? And what can I do for you? And when you get your focus off yourself and put it on Him, 
that's where the blessings come because you're functioning and living as God has created you to live. Yeah. And that's where the joy comes because you, you're responding to grace. And you know what is so yeah. funny about that? Because that joy, I have been accused so many times of being too happy in church. I have oh, been no. so many times accused of this just within the last two weeks again. You're always happy. Mm -hmm. That's because I first spend time with God before I walk into the church, which yourself. makes a difference. Yeah, yeah. So, but I think you're right. I think there's a huge difference today. Yeah. And, and the question is, how can we turn that around and what would that calling be? And yeah. uh, what could that calling be for you? And how could you turn that around that you start serving instead of expecting to be served? Stay tuned. I would encourage you to get involved with Love Your Life Ministries by attending a uh, conference, a meeting that we have once a month, every month. The next one will be in January. And to see how different women um, have gone through different journeys and, and struggles in their life. And be encouraged that you can change and, and be loved. Dave Dick is with me and we're talking about how you can find out how you too know how it is that God is calling you and to what. Now I want to focus on that a little more. I know Heartstone is incredible and in what you're doing there. But when you're, you're often into a calling and you're following God's plan, mm. stuff happens that greatly will just destroy you or yeah. discourage you. Has that happened to you at Heartstone? Um, right now it has not. Um, yeah. I'm pretty green behind the ears. We <laughs> just started yeah. our first year. Um, I know God is faithful and he'll, he is faithful to provide and also provide protection. Um, and uh, whatever does come, uh, we know that he, he will provide and he will take care. Um, yeah. And re in regards to the calling too, I, I've talked with many Christians and I think this could be helpful just to share. When we think of God's calling or his will or his guidance, um, in his Bible, his word, he, God has already told us what his call is or what his will is. And I think what happens a lot of times we be, can become kind of mystical and thinking, what is God's plan? I don't know what's God's will, what's, what's his call? And I really think if we would start from the Bible and see that God has already showed us what his will is. He showed us what to do, what not to do. Um, like we know this Bible tells us, here's God's will, that you be saved, that you be spared from the consequences of your sin, that you be sanctified. First Thessalonians 4 says, for this is God's will, your sanctification that you abstain from sexual morality and each one knows how to control his own body and, sancti and sanctification and honor. So you see clearly that God says, here's my will, that you be saved, you be sanctified, that you be spirit filled, even that you suffer. He says it's God's will that we can suffer because we can honor him and glorify him in those things. So Doesn't that say in Romans 8:28, yeah. uh, everything will come together yeah. to God's glory for good, Correct. even if we don't like it and it yeah. doesn't feel good? Yeah. Now about that calling that you're talking about yeah. here, um, Often I have noticed, and I want your response to that, often I've noticed that a lot of times the pain of the past mm -hmm. becomes the blessing of the calling in the future. Hmm. Would you agree with that? God definitely uses that. Um, you look at great men in the scriptures, many men that God uses greatly, he had, he's broken severely. And you yeah. look at King David, here's a man after God's heart, that the Bible tells us, yet he committed adultery and murder, and, yet, and God humbled him. And he cries out and he says, Lord, against you and you alone have I sinned and done evil in your sight. And you see God restore him and use him in great ways. Same thing with the Apostle Paul. And, and you look at these examples in the scriptures where a lot of times God will put you through the, the fire to refine you, to help you along. Similar to your ministry, sometimes when gals have been broken or had things happen yeah. to them or things that they have done, they can be healed and forgiven from those things. Mm -hmm. And then from there, they can use what their past and be changed to be able to help other people from their past. Yeah. So that's one way that you can use uh, your past to glorify God in the present. Yeah, so. and, and, and you know, I actually think it says it in the Bible that a person actually, instead of going to God, mm -hmm. walks away from God. And um, it says here in Matthew 19, actually first I want to go to Matthew 22, verse 14, there's this wedding feast mm -hmm. and God invites everybody, I'm yeah. like a lot of people and they all are too busy for God. There is no time for God. Yeah. And then he says, no, none of them want to come. None of them want to be there. Now invite all the homeless, the beggars, those that, that were not invited yet. Invite all of them and yeah. they show up. But then at the end it says this Bible first, and I want your opinion on that because it says in Matthew 22 verse 14, 
for many are called. Hmm. God calls everybody. For many are called, but few are chosen. Yeah. Now, I know this is meant more about the salvation mm -hmm. and focus that, that God asks everybody to get to know Jesus, to become part of yeah. His kingdom. Yeah. However, do you believe that there are a lot of people there mm -hmm. that God calls and they're too busy mm -hmm. and have no time or trust to become the chosen ones to make a different part of the blessing? How, how do yeah. you see that? Well, we see God's example already that He's shown to us in the world with Noah and the flood. Um, there could have been millions of people alive at that time. And because of man's wickedness, God uh, only spared Noah and his family. And so God poured His wrath out on the world and punished sin. Um, and, he sh and He shows the ark is kind of a picture of the hope that we can have that if we come to Christ, we can be spared. And because, because God is holy, He has to and must pun punish sin. Yeah. But what's amazing, instead of giving us what we deserve, His Son, God in the flesh comes and takes our punishment for us, and He is the ark, the boat, that if we trust in Him, we come to Him, we can be delivered. And so in regards to those being chosen and called, the Bible says that it, it's more than just believing that Jesus died on the cross and rose from the dead, because the Bible says the demons believe, yeah. and they actually tremble. They actually we should tremble we should, too. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so it's not just knowing about God, but it's having an intimate relationship with Him that you can know Him personally, not, not just know about Him. Uh, even in Matthew 7, it talks about that many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not do all these miracles and these signs in your name? And Jesus says, depart from me, I never knew you. And that's the Greek word's gnosko. It's, a, it's an intimate knowledge, and an experiential knowledge of having a relationship with somebody, not just knowing about God or even believing facts about Him, but actually knowing Him personally. And so, yeah, there's that. The no, and that I want to back that up because it chosen. says it here. Because yeah. uh, actually Jesus answers the question yeah. in how to get to know to how to get to, to follow in his calling. And yeah. it says, the, uh, it's about the rich young ruler. Yeah. And it's in Matthew 19, starting at verse 16. And I want to give you just little excerpts about this. Yeah. And it says, and someone came to him and said, teacher, what good thing shall I do that I may et obtain eternal life? Hmm. And then he says, and I'm going to just take snippets out yeah. of it. If you wish to enter into life, keep the commandments, which is, of course, love the Lord your God with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself, yeah. which includes Jesus. And then it says, the young man said to him, I am doing all this. I am taking care of it. What am I still lacking? And Jesus said to him, if you wish to complete, to be complete, go and sell your possessions. You have done that. Mm -hmm. Go and sell your possessions and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and come follow me. Yeah. Now that doesn't mean God's telling everybody to sell their possessions, yeah. but it's giving everything mm -hmm. basically. Then the young man says, too much yeah. and walks away. walks away. And then it says here, again I say to you, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And then the disciple says, that, then who qualifies? Mm -hmm. And he says, with people, this is impossible. Jesus talking, but with God, all things are possible. Mm -hmm. How yeah. can we get more people yeah. to make a difference, to share the love of God? So just like Jesus said, with people, it's impossible. Yeah. You can't come to faith unless God gives you faith to have faith in Him. And He's the one that wakens us. Just like when Jesus talked to Nicodemus in John 3, and we have yeah. a famous verse, For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And the context of that was Nicodemus coming, so well, how, how? He said, you must be born again. Born again? What, what does that mean? And he says, you must be born from above, born by the Spirit. And so God, if it's cool, because he's the author and finisher of faith, he gets all the credit, right? Yeah. So he says, here's the way to be saved. Here's how you come to him. It's a free gift, but it'll cost you everything. It's when you recognize the value of how great and wonderful he is, then you realize, why would I want to hold on to anything in this life yeah. as a treasure that's far less of value compared to the greatest treasure as of, as of knowing him, like the rich young ruler. He said, I see Jesus who you are, but I, I can't go there. I love my stuff too much. And Jesus called his heart out. And that's where we need to call our hearts out. What's more important to us? Is God truly, does he have our all? Can we put our families, our marriages, our workplace, our finances, all of our stuff and say, God, everything I have is from you. My life is from you. 
why would I not just surrender it all and give up and trust you and live for your glory? Wow, yeah, you know? that's it. Yeah. You just hit the, the, the hammer on the nail. Yeah. So yeah. that is exactly it. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah. Uh, could you give this to Julie? Oh, Ransom, yeah, sure. the book I wrote, cool. Loving Yourself yeah. from the Inside Out, yeah. which Heartstone is all about. Cool. And I am so excited about your passion because your life is touching so many other lives because you're following God's lead and calling. Dave, thank you yeah. to be on the show. Thank you, and for you, I just want you to know, how do you know God calls you? Well, I'm gonna give you some samples out of the Bible. Mary, Mary, the mother of Jesus, was called by an angel. There was Joseph who was called by a dream, the stepfather of Jesus. There was Samuel who was called three times and did not recognize God's voice. And then somebody else told him what was happening when he asked for an explanation. Moses did not get it. And finally God put an entire burning bush in front of him to draw his attention. And so often we don't get it at all. And you're not sure if he got it immediately or not, but many of us don't see those blessings that God gives us right away or the calling on our life. Jonah knew God's calling and he said no and went the other direction, but God got him there anyway. And it was a lot more hardship than he could have ever imagined and God is calling you. If it's through a dream, it's through an inner voice inside, if it's through His Word, the Bible, if it's through an angel, whatever it is, know this, that when you walk in God's will, your life will never be the same, but you can see the joy in Dave, Dick, because it is worded, every bit of it. God wants to help you too. Call us, connect with us, so we can encourage you, we can teach you, and we can help you too to make a difference in this world. 855-836-1100, or go to our website, barbtv.org. God loves you, God calls you, will you listen?